Test, test, test. Hey guys, welcome to the League of Legends Amateur Open. <laughs> uh, I guess I miss uh, uh, communication at the very start here, but that's alright. Uh, looks like the game is underway here. Um, uh, there is some echo being heard. Uh, do y'all in the chat hear that currently? Uh, okay, I don't know what's going on exactly. But the bands are coming out here. We have Kenan, Elise, and uh, Master G coming down very quickly. And on the other side, we have Zach and Renekton getting banned. And we'll have to see what that third band is here. Should be happening very shortly. And yeah, Thresh is going down. Uh, and it looks like uh, the Bear is getting hovered over here for uh, Blue Side, which is uh, BDM. Or BDA, I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what it looks like it's going to be. It's going to be the Batman on Bala Bear. So we have uh, Bad Shadu and uh, Ponser Tank uh, going right now, seeing what they can do. Uh, Jarvin's getting, her, uh, getting hovered over for Bad. Uh, Jarvin's pretty good right now. He has uh, a lot of utility. I mean, with his Cataclysm, he can definitely make people either pop their flashes or just lock them down if, if they're on uh, down, unless they have a way of getting out of it, like a, a tumble from Vayne, uh, arcade chip from Israel, just all those kinds of good stuff. And we got Blitzcrank getting hovered over also. And yeah, those, like, those are going to be the two strong picks there. Joining in a little bit late, but hello Robert, this is also Pippin, going to be helping co-cast this. Joining in a little late, just making sure all the microphone echoing doesn't happen right now. So yes, you are right, we have the Jarvan Blitzcrank currently being locked in for Purple Side, Volibear, and Udyr being locked in. This could be a lane Udyr unless there wants to be a uh, trade with Volibear. Both Volibear and Udyr are very prominent top laners, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, I would say uh, currently we see more Volibears in top lane, but yeah, both of those are definitely able to swap. Let's say uh, there's a champion that either one of those top lanes feel like they'll be like, uh, lackluster on, on one of those champions that can definitely do a swap at any moment. Um, Core has not selected a champion yet. We'll have to see what he decides to go with. And let's see, it looks like Janna actually. Janna is very strong right now. Um, one of the more popular supports right now, along with Sona, Thresh, and uh, Nami currently. Yeah, Janna actually one of the larger or uh, more prominent disengaged champions. If uh, should a team member get caught or uh, the purple team wants to really initiate onto the blue team, Janna can use that monsoon and just blow everybody away, completely negate all of those initiations. And I actually find that to be a very interesting pick into Blitzcrank because Blitzcrank does not go into your team. He pulls your team to them. So what Janna does to help negate Blitzcrank's uh, early aggression with those rocket grabs is going to be rather interesting. Currently, uh, for the purple side, Varus and Twisted Fate currently being hovered over. Twisted Fate, a very, very common mid laner with his lane uh, presence, pretty much global presence also. The moment he hits level 6 with that gate, but it looks like uh, they're hovering champions right now. Currently changing over quite a few. Right now, Rumble and Draven also being hovered over. A uh, bit of indecision, perhaps, for the blue team, cycling a couple of different champions, really trying to work out the strategy. Yeah, and uh, I'm a little bit behind here because I'm having to watch the champion select through and thing, and uh, he <laughs> decided to do some modifications there, but it's all good. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they're going to lock in Rumble and Twitch, actually. So a lot of AoE coming here with the Cataclysm. That's definitely a great combo. Uh, I feel like Blitzcrank is a little off super. We'll have to see what that last pick is. Maybe they have a, a good combo going on. Yeah, right now, uh, Twitch and Blitzcrank, very aggressive lane. Right now, Janna and Graves being hovered over right now, which is a rather interesting short range based um attack there oh wait never mind this is this is interesting we have a sona pick coming out so double support picks this could be a janna mid lane it could be Jan mid lane or even sona mid both of those are possible um is that sona locked in yet because i know i'm a little bit behind uh sona is still currently hovering right now actually yeah, yeah just now cycling to lux so could be could be a bunch of different things actually right now. Janna, the I do believe this actually will be Janna support because right now she er, is currently carrying Exhaust and Flash. So I do believe uh, Night Stalker is going to be covering the mid lane with Lux. Yeah, uh, currently we don't see, I would assume one of these, um, obviously, obviously we see some revives and clear points being shown right now. I doubt that's exactly what they're gonna be rolling with. 
But uh, let's try and see deer with Ignite here. Uh, you think it's possible we could be seeing uh, duo top lane? Might see duo... It, actually, yeah, Volibear actually changing off his smite for teleport. And again, uh, some of these guys are currently hovering some summoner spells, so there could be some last minute changes after everybody is locked in, but duo top Udyr Volibear could be possible. Both champions are notoriously difficult to shove out of lane once they get their farming game going, and those two are really notorious split pushing champions. They can duel very effectively just due to their high health counts, high defense counts, and just doing a very good job of just dueling everybody out. So. We may not see a jungler for backdoor heroes. I'm not sure what's going on with their composition, but if there is not a jungler, then that is the uh, that is the cue for uh, Fad Sashu to really start reigning over all four quadrants of the uh, Summoner's Rift jungle. Yeah, and just they have Rumble. Rumble's actually a pretty good 2v1-er. Uh, obviously, it's not his ideal situation, but he's definitely one of the champions who does better at it than most. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I don't feel like a duo lane would be the would because I, I do see how it could work but against rumble i just don't think that'd be the best choice unless maybe they swap maybe janna and graves to rumble's lane then they could just do a lot of harass maybe could be a chance rumble is actually rather safe in the one versus two lanes as long as he maxes that harpoon first to really help him last hit under turret he can farm up relatively safely under that turret he has that scrap shield on a very low cooldown so he can shield himself from a lot of the harassment keep in mind that both uh volibear and udir are melee and actually we just saw udir switching over to smite so this is going to be an udir jungle volibear top lane rumble's gonna have his work cut out for him trying to take down that bear but that'll be a rather interesting matchup i don't think either can really force the other out of lane it's really going to come down to the jungle presence to see who gets the lane advantage yeah, there's no real counter lanes currently, it seems like. So it looks like they are team-oriented. They both have really strong uh, team compositions. So they're probably just trying to stay safe, wait until they can get to the uh, mid-game, and then probably just try to do team fights there. Yeah, the, uh, the purple team, most notably, has a very interesting assassination com uh, composition through uh, Blitzcrank, Twitch, and Jarvan, who can lock up individual targets in the midst of a team fight. Jarvan's Cataclysm uh, creating impassable terrain, and combining that with Blitz's Rocket Grab, which um, creates positioning issues by pulling the, uh, pulling, uh, the blue team to his own team. You have Twitch who can assassinate. You have Diana who can lock that person in place. You have Jarvan with that impassable terrain, impassable terrain, uh, preventing the rest of uh, backdoor heroes from helping out. And then, of course, you have that Rumble Equalizer to add further delays with that potent slow and damage output. So it's a really interesting assassination team fight potential. It's really meant to split the blue team up and make sure that they can't help one another. It's going to create a lot of chaos, and it's going to be interesting to see how the blue team responds to that. Yeah, I mean, they do have Janna, though, for uh, BDH right now, and she definitely has a lot of disengage, uh, but the only issue is if someone gets caught by Blitz, though, there's no way unless Janna pops a flash to disengage someone by, you know, a little bit. It's not going to be that useful if someone gets caught, so they need to really be careful of that, And but, like, you know, Jarva comes out of nowhere, knocks everyone up, and then do this cat kills, and Janna can definitely just knock everyone off of that and be relatively safe for a good bit. But, uh, yeah, I think the major thing that uh, NCG right now, that uh, Pwns or Tank is going to be trying to focus on right now, is just trying to land those hooks. Yeah, and he, he actually needs to be pretty careful once those team fight phases start, not to grab Udyr and Volibear, because grabbing one of those into your team could spell disaster, because they're going to have a lot of health, a lot of armor and magic resist. He does not want to cr try to grab them, because that is essentially just going to initiate the fight for the blue team on their own. Even grabbing Graves may not be the best of ideas because Graves is one of the tankier AD carries with that passive true grit grinding and bonus armor and magic resist. Definitely a preferred target to Udyr and Volibear, but still, he, Graves may be able to survive should he get grabbed. Key targets to grab are going to be Lux and Janna, but whether Blitz is going to be able to grab them is a whole nother story. Janna with her notorious amount of disengage, and Lux just being a very long-range mage overall. So, Blitz is going to have his work cut out for him. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do come the mid and late game if the blue team is able to get that advantage, but we're just going to have to wait and see, honestly. Yep, looks like we're about to be ready to go in the uh, loading screen here. We're going to be able to see who has the skin, uh, uh, skin intimidation factor. Uh, just loading up here. 
I don't know. Since I'm going to be getting into the game now, you can uh, go over the skin intimidation factor if you would like. Sounds good. Keep in mind, guys, this is game one. Backdoor Heroes versus Nomad Gaming Company. First Spirit Guard Udyr, we're going to see BDH the Batman running that legendary. Is it or is it legendary or ultimate? It's ultimate. For running the ultimate skin. So we're going to see Spirit Guard Udyr, Rune Guard Volibear, and standard skins for the rest of the blue team, Janna, Graves, and Lux. Purple team, meanwhile, Warring Kingdoms, Jarvan the Fourth, Standard Blitzcrank, Rumble, Gangster Twitch, very popular skin because of that sweet Tommy gun he has, and finally, Diana in rocking the normal skin. Yeah, so it looks like it is, because uh, I believe we did decide the ultimate skins were two, uh, but I really like that Warrior Jarvan skin. I, I would say that counts as two also, so it's it's tied up. I would say three to three. Uh, Rune Guard Volbear is relatively. Uh, not seen much. It is a nice skin, but I just don't think it would consider two skins. It's one of the more recent skins that was actually a release form, if I'm not mistaken. So not many people catching up to it, perhaps. Uh, Volibear has actually been a rather... I haven't seen a lot of Volibears personally, but um, the few I have seen are rocking the uh, more standard skins. So Rungal Volibear, good to see him. Uh, rocking in the action, but I'm really interested to see uh, Spirit Guard Ud Udyr, actually, because I personally have not seen him in-game yet. Oh, really? You must not play a lot of solo queue, then. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, one of their three games I still see Spirit Udyr, but when it first got released, it was at least every other game. It was pretty ridiculous, but I don't know, you, see a, you saw a lot of good Udyrs come back into the scene, which I think is a good thing. So I think even the skin kind of brought him back into the light, but then people realize that Spirit uh, Udyr himself is actually a very strong champion, and he's actually getting seen back in the uh, scene besides uh, just his new skin. Yeah, good to see Udyr back. The uh, skin actually revitalizing the spirit of those Udyr players, getting them back into the game, and just making Udyr... He, he's really shining now after uh, the release of that skin because beforehand somebody would really pick Udyr and you wouldn't see him do that well. But with the um, ultimate skin being released, you see a lot more Udyr players and that means a resurgence of really good Udyr players. So good to see that coming back in. Game is currently underway. This is the first game of the League of Legends Amateur Open. So let's go ahead and get this underway. Currently, standard items coming out for the, both teams. Doran's Blades for AD carries, uh, machetes, and wards coming out for junglers and supports, respectively. One thing to note, Volibear has opened with a no magic mantle to negate to give a bit of an extra magic resist buff for that top lane. Who is he facing well, top lane? Rumble. Looks like a rumble. So gain yeah. that no magic mantle, trying to prevent as much of that harassment as possible. Rumble really is a lane bully with that early, early uh, flame spitter damage. So negating as much of that as possible, especially since Volibear has to be in the thick of things to last hit, going to help him out a lot. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's looking to be too aggressive here. I'm not seeing any real invade possibilities. Um, one thing I would like to know is that actually Bucks and Volibear both decide to go with that um, no magic uh, mantle there. So, ooh, actually almost catches uh, Graves there that a rocket grab almost did. If that did, that would definitely would have at least popped his flash. Uh, may not have killed him, but would have been pretty dang close. Um, yeah, it looks like they might actually try to steal his... Uh, I don't know, maybe. Looks they like they just, just that. wanted the ward. Yeah, they might ward it. Okay, never mind. I, thought, I was thinking maybe they were going to ward that and then try to... See if they can pull someone from this back push, but uh, looks like that's not what they're going to like to do. Looks like they're just going to go back and retreat to their blue. Yeah, it looks like there may be some contest here once this red buff spawns. Uh, could be about 30 seconds afterwards. Keep in mind, this is a deep ward for the red team, so uh, they are going to know the moment uh, Udyr decides to go down and take that red buff. That'll open up the lanes to either push or retreat as necessary. Perhaps there could be an uh, instance to counter jungle and or collapse in on Udyr as he's attempting to take that buff. Minions, have, or uh, jungle creeps at the very least, have spawned. And interestingly enough, looks like Twitch and Blitzcrank are going top lane, forcing the two versus one. Yeah, Rumble, uh, like we said before the game, has a real good time again. Well, not a good time, but has a better uh, chance to 1v1. So I think they feel like Twitch and Blitz could probably decimate a Volibear. Definitely there is a before he gets a lot of HP to get that passive really going for him. So I think Volibear's going to have a real hard time here compared to Rumble. Yeah, Volibear being a very good split pusher, if he's able to get that uh, his early game going, can just become an immovable force in lane. But with this twitch Blitzcrank combination, you have a good uh, combo of ranged harass and displacement with those rocket grabs. So 
Little Bear has to be very careful, wait until his uh, creepers actually get to the tower. Meanwhile, as we can see at the red buff, here's the aggression. Udyr is cycling in. Jarvan actually able to steal that red buff away, leaving Udyr in the dust. Yeah, poor Udyr, that's always a... Uh, it's not as... since the new jungle patches have come out, where you don't instantly hit level 3, uh, if you just do those two... Uh, Ooh, mid lane. Yeah, Midley and Jarvan going heavy here on Deluxe. Not going to be able to pick up a kill, but definitely uh, show some presence. And eh, Flash can pop. No, pop, uh, Flash did not get popped. But uh, yeah, at least some pressure going on. Always nice to see. Yeah, Lux needs to be careful during her early game because she is limited by high mana cost and high cooldown. So if Diana can bait out that Light Binding, it is a free reign for that jungler to come in and wreck her as she's trying to slowly walk back to her turret. Meanwhile, top lane, we see Volibear getting forced back to turret. Currently, uh, very low on CS. 3 CS to Twitch is 20. Really getting shut down right now. This is gonna be a really interesting farm game because he's gonna ha rely heavily on uh, Ugir to come up and help. And right now, he desperately needs it because Twitch doing a very good job of very good job of forcing Volibear back, making sure he can't do much of anything. Actually, Twitch getting caught. Blitz pulling Volibear back. Twitch is stealth. Volibear now caught a bit out, Twitch using that stealth to escape the tower's clutches. And look at how much harassment Twitch is just able to put out. Volibear down to 25% health. Yeah, it's definitely not the best situation to be in. Um, but look at the uh, CS all around. Looks like, uh, besides just currently, besides the jungles, every lane is actually going just slightly ahead in terms of no bad gaming company. So they're doing a good job. Um, they're just being slightly ahead, but uh, you know this is still the early stages of the game. Uh, anything can happen at this point. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a slower early game phase. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a farm game, especially since uh, these lane swaps have happened. The two versus ones are currently going out to try to shut down the top lanes as much as possible. Uh, Squishy in the bottom lane, keep in mind, has open door and shield, so a lot more prepared for the uh, auto attack harassment of Graves and Janna as compared to. Um, Doomaker, who currently has that no magic mantle, not going to help him much against the AD carry of Twitch. Yeah, definitely not the best situation to be going through, but you deal with what you can. Um, see, looks like Diana is actually playing pretty aggressive here on the, this Lux. Pushing her onto the tower. I uh, feel safe. I uh, probably feel safe, even if this Udyr decided not oh, that she could escape back. Yeah, keep in mind Lux. Uh... Uh, Night Stalker on Lux is currently out of mana, so she's going to be forced back. Really needs to hold out until she gets that Chalice of Harmony. Batman currently coming in to hold that lane, make sure that CS does not go to waste. Night Stalker actually opening No Match and Mantle, kind of afraid of uh, Diana. Currently teleporting back to lane, going to uh, just trying to farm up as much as possible using that teleport. A little bit defensively, I guess, Ooh, making sure that lane. does not fall. Oh, go for it. Yeah, top lane looks like Blitzkrieg did land his rock jump, forcing the flash away from Volibear. Uh, they couldn't capitalize on as much as they'd like to, but definitely blew his flash, so that's definitely a huge part. Um, and, sorry, and, not only that, and not only that, but they also burned the uh, Chosen of the Storm, so Volibear is going to have a little less safety if he wants to try to go in and harass these guys at all. Yeah. Blitz is actually doing a good job with his rocket jabs, actually got another one, and Exhaust goes on to him. Uh, they just couldn't capitalize, though. Drift was a little bit out of position, couldn't get the hits any once, too. But uh, Jarvan's right here in the bushes. Might try to get a gank on here, might even tower dive. Uh, let's get the eyes on this top lane. Uh, she might be seeing something happen, debating if they're gonna do it. Uh, but so the girl dead, they are gonna go heavy, and first blood going to Twitch. Yeah, and that is the problem with these two versus one lanes, getting forced back to tower because of all of that harassment and simply dying because of it. Meanwhile, mid lane, tons of aggression going down. Both champions brought extremely low. Final Spark going out. Night Stalker able to pick up the kill as Diana tried to retreat. Yeah, very nice job there, uh, Diana. Has been destroyed. Um, it's not Diana, of Lux. Uh, she was going slightly behind, but uh, she does have a 10 CS lead. Uh, Diana does so this is gonna be now Lux is ahead uh, by a little bit So hopefully uh, she'll be able to come in here push the lane a little bit Recall and come back and hopefully have a better start because usually if you can get first blood the lane usually goes more and more in your favor with a Diana Lux combo Yeah, Lux really needs her early burst if she wants to try to get Diana down at all because the moment Diana um attains her an abyssal scepter it's going to be hard for lux to instantly burst her down as you can see diana already has that negatron cloak blue team actually uh taking dragon able to compensate the uh, top tower take
by the red team. Actually, a very early tower around uh, seven minutes that tower was taken. And keep in mind, this actually does allow uh, Doomaker to free farm just a little bit. So he's going to have a little bit easier time CSing Twitch and... Uh, or am I thinking of the right teams? Yes, Twitch and Blitzcrank. Not going to want to overextend that far. I'm seeing a cross-eyed right now, but this is going to allow Doomaker to free farm just a little bit. Try to get up to a respectable CS mount. Currently staying on 20, but Twitch at 63 CS just picked up his BF sword. Yeah, it looks like Jarvan actually going to do some counter jungling here. Uh, going to pick up these raids. Ooh, but look how we're at the blue. Look, we've got Bolivar and uh, Rumble. They're trying to fight it out here. Uh, ooh, Ignite does go on a rumble. Bolivar might decide to chase this. Oh, but here comes Diana. Might try to bait him. Here we go. Here comes Diana going heavily in. Press strike hits him, and yeah, he's going to shoot after that. It looks like all the members of each respective team cycling over, looking for a bit of a team engagement around this blue buff. Jarvan uh, moving in, Diana Moon falling over the wall as well. Udyr a bit caught out. Smite goes off, Cataclysm goes out. Good flash to get away from that. Looks like Lux coming in to support a little bit. And I do believe the blue buff did go to, uh, trying to look. Went to Diana. Went to Diana. Ooh, Diana actually picking up that blue buff. So successful steal by the red team. Very good job. Yeah, they did a good job there with that. Uh, they did a good job just trying to incorporate that. They made them think that they had backed off, but because there was no vision, they didn't know for sure. And then they just came in and just saw that blue buff right from their nose and then uh, did some pressure, but got no kills out of it. But so getting a blue buff is definitely a plus. Yeah, Batman just able to grab his red before uh, Hidashi was able to sneak in. Uh, Hidashi going to leave uh, empty handed. Just because Udyr was able to snap, uh, grab that, dra uh, or excuse me, grab that red buff, pass possible. Meanwhile, bot lane, Blitz grabbing Graves, forcing the barrier and the flash. Both uh, JP and Crow extremely low. Diana able to pick up kill on Crow, and JP falls soon after. Four man surround, and that may be the bottom lane turret. Yeah, they should at least be able to get that. There is no dragon objective, so I think that would probably be the objective they're going to go for. Just try to get this turret down. Uh, at least get it very low, because it does have a lot of HP. Uh, Udyr's here, but I don't think he's going to try to contest it. He's, he would hate to be caught right now. Actually, they are taking that tower down extremely fast. Yeah, I should have no uh, issues taking that. Blue team's yeah, currently three destroyed. people down. T uh, bottom turret has been gone. Now. Unfortunately, there was no way for the blue team to really respond with much else. Just like you said, Dragon Objective is currently down. Uh, Squishy currently maintaining the top lane against Doomaker. Actually getting a really aggressive. Shows the Storm Pop. Equalizer going down. It's going to be a flat out brawl between these two guys. Bullabear actually able to pick up the kill with that chomp. Very yeah. good trade. I was actually very surprised. Chosen and Storm doing a very good job of keeping him alive there. Yeah, he did a very good job. Um, he, if, I'm not 100% sure, but it looked like he was just slightly out of uh, Rumble's ultimate there. Out of his um, uh, the equalizer. Looks like he was just barely out of it. Even though it did, the initial damage did take on him, the air of effect damage of just standing it, he was just slightly out of it. So he did a good job with his positioning without not moving at all. Yeah, I think he expected Bolivar to stop Juke towards the brush, try to fight in there and play with the vision a little bit. Unfortunately, Bolivar stood and fought like the true armored bear he was, relied on that past him to tank through that damage and was able to pick up the kill because of that. Currently, blue team starting to siege that mid lane tower. However, Diana doing a very good job of clearing those mini waves, making sure the blue team cannot uh, properly siege that tower. However, final spark is going to bring them all pretty low, honestly. Yeah, they take a good chunk of HP out, but here comes Jarvan, though, kind of lurking in the bushes. It is Wardus. So they do know that he's there. Uh, let's see, looks like a team fight might be going here. All members of both teams are here on both sides. Uh, Jarvan, of course, just doing the rates, but he's definitely close up in case something goes crazy, and looks like they're slowly splitting away to uh, go back to their respectable lanes and do some farm. Yeah, Secret currently necking health potions left and right as he's trying to recover from that Lux harassment. Keep in mind, Lux has a Chalice of Harmony, a Fiendish Codex, and a Cage's Lucky Pick. So she has a good mix of gold intake, ability power, and cooldown reduction. So she's going to be a very sol uh, she's going to look very solid coming into this mid lane. Currently teleporting back into lane, probably looking to re-siege on this tower. Keep in mind, Pink Ward is currently staying for the blue team in the middle of this lane. They're going to know if Twitch is trying to come in with for an ambush. Yeah, very good job there. Um... So obviously they do know the what they need to do. Uh, they even got both pinks into both bushes, actually not just the middle lane, but actually both ends of the bushes. So there's no way he's gonna get a flank off without uh, with surprising when this mid lane. Yeah, five pink wards in total right now. Uh, one in each mid lane brush, one smack in the middle, 
uh, no, and other ports uh, in South River. So they really want to make sure Twitch does not sneak up on them. And actually, that vision war in the brush, I believe, will spot that uh, sight ward that Jarvan just put down. Ping coming out. Looks like they did spot Lux cycling down. Lux knows Jarvan is coming up. Pops a listen right there. Just gets a little bit of free damage. Looks like the teams are settling down right now, looking to try to push a little bit. Push these lanes out just a little bit. Three members of the blue team are on top tower. Rumble is alone. This could be a dive. Yeah, it could be, but there's nobody. It looks like uh, actually Graves getting caught out here by by four members of Nomad Gaming here. He's trying to go down, trying to escape, but yeah, he just followed, but then Rumble gets fallen from top lane by Udyr, Janna, and Volibear. One for one trade is going to depend upon what happens in terms of objective control. Blue team forced away from that top tower by an advancing minion wave. They have no minions themselves to tank it. Doomaker is rather low on health, so he does have to be careful. But meanwhile, Dragon respawn. Red team currently uh, cycling towards it, bringing it down to about half health. And I do not believe this is going to be a contest. Yeah, that is a non non contested Baron. Uh, let's try to get there to see if maybe she could at least see what was going on because she had no for sure vision. But by the time she checked, it was already uh, out of the way. Says uh, two dragons down now. Uh, looks like Nova Gaming is pulling away now by about 3k gold. So definitely doing their part. Uh, I don't know, let's look at the items over for a second. We got Volibear going for a Phage, so I would see that turning into a Frozen Mallet here. Just because the more HP Volibear stacks, the more his passive just grows and grows and grows. Um, yeah, and alongside that Frozen Mallet, he's going to be able to chase people down four days with those auto attacks slowing alongside that Majestic Roar. So he, if he can catch uh, one of the squishier members of the purple team, they are not going to get away from the Armor Bear chasing him down on all fours. It's like a bunch of damage from uh, Backdoor Heroes here going on to his mid-turn. Oh, actually, great grabbing a Janna now. Oh, of course, proper flash, but uh, I bet they didn't get out of there okay. Yeah, that was great almost flash. devastating. Yeah, great flash to get away. It was lucky she was able to pop that off before either the silence of that static field or that power fist knocking her up in time for the rest of uh, the red team to react. So good uh, good flash, able to save her life, save the blue team from another kill. Actually relatively even in kills, but the red team, because of their dragon control and tower control, currently up 3k. Yeah, they're doing a really great job. Um, looks like here comes Janna, I mean uh, Jarvan, trying to just poke around, trying to see if maybe he could put some pressure onto this uh, mid turret here. Who actually, if he sees Lux going here, they might go full grab. Oh, but nice block grab on Janna now. Doing a whole bunch of damage. It looks like they're on the chase. Uh, I thought they were going to be sure. I thought they were going to die, but could be there. But they decided it's probably not the best choice to go up, chase a full HP with here. Actually, they might actually be able to do it. Final Spark coming out from Lux. Oh, Cackles comes out, but ooh, it barely flashes just in time. Uh, looks like Blitz is taking a couple of tower hits here, but here comes Volibear trying to clean things up. Might be able to pick up Jarvan. Jarvan going for very low. Bite does come down on him now. Volibear going heavy on the uh, switch. Here comes Diana. They're trying to support him. He might be going down. Volibear does go down there by uh, the flank there from Diana. Yeah, great fight by the red team, and that is the power of Blitzcrank versus Janna. Janna very good at disengaging fights when the red team goes in. But the problem is they don't have to go in. They can just bring the blue team to them with those Blitzcrank rocket grabs. And because that, Janna really has to time her disengages really carefully. And because she was grabbed initially, she couldn't burn anything. I do not believe she... Uh... She definitely did not have her flash. I don't think she wanted to burn her monsoon because I don't think she really had time during that engagement. And because of that, uh, the red team was able to capitalize on the fact that the blue team now didn't have their primary mode of disengage. And uh, they were able to tower dive into it, pick up a lot of kills. Yeah, I gave it up for uh, Power Take. Now he's doing a great job with his rocket jabs. Definitely pulling a lot of the members of uh, Backdoor Heroes to him. So it's definitely making an impact on this game. Looks like, uh, look at that towers here. We have two and three down, so all the outer charts for, uh, if I could think for a second, <laughs> for uh, backdoor heroes uh, are down. Looks like Jarvan and Volibear are gonna see each other, flex some muscles, then run away with it because they both realize they're both too big to really be playing with each other to get any real progress done anytime, anytime soon. Lux picking up that Holy Grail and looks like Twitch Picking up that Infinity Edge, that's a huge damage burst coming in from him. Yeah, has an Infinity Edge and a Vampiric Scepter. If Twitch can get proper positioning in these team fights uh, toward the blue team, uh, oh, 
goodness, to where backdoor heroes are going to be clumping up, then that spray and pray is going to be doing ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of damage. So, uh, um, backdoor heroes are going to have to be very careful in their position. They're really going to want to spread out, isolate members of the Nomad Gaming Company, and try to make sure that they don't fight on the Nomad Gaming Company's terms. Because if they clump up, Twitch is going to start dominating them with that Infinity Edge. Yeah, and plus playing straight uh, would be a generally good idea, because if everyone's clumped up, that's going to give Blitz just that much easier time to grab. It's not everyone's going to be able to juke out his grab if they're all bunched up. Yeah, and keep in mind, Diana currently uh, does have her Abyssal Scepter and is actually going much more offensively than we might expect, actually grabbing a needlessly large broad right off the bat. What do you think we might see at Diana? Is a uh, Death Cap or a Zhonya's? I would assume a Zhonya's because if she can go in uh, to initiate maybe them going on to her, that would be a lot easier time with teamfights. But it looks like we've got a huge teamfight going here. The Equalizer coming out from Mumble doing a bunch of damage here, but Diana picking up the first going to uh, Janna. So they're trying to go tag some does go down, not gonna be able to pick up a whole bunch. Looks like Dan done job, great job with the flash and a uh, double kill there for her and a kill for Jarvin. So that's a uh, ooh, four for fight still going on. So that was a four for nothing trade there in favor of No Bad Gaming Company. Yeah, and I don't believe JP was there for a good portion of that fight. Uh, the red team, uh, Nomad Gaming Company, doing a very good job of clumping up the members of the uh, Backdoor Heroes. And the moment they tried to disengage, uh, Jarvin came in with a perfect class cataclysm to lock up the remaining team members, and Twitch was just able to clean them up flawlessly. So, JP gained a little bit out of position right now. Uh, Nomad Gaming Company actually doing a pretty good job of warding the interior bases, trying to make sure uh, they have vision as much as possible. JP does pick up the kill on Jarvin. Rumble actually now caught up. Squishy is caught out here. Exhaust goes down. Yeah, he's he's gone. Staying a little bit too long as the blue team was able to respawn and pick up a couple of compensa compensation kills. It looks like Lux is down here. I'm trying to do what she can. Yeah, down again that Zonia's Hourglass. Which is what I assumed. Ooh, and Rumble picking up that Rally Scepter. A lot of slows now coming out of uh, no bad gaming, uh, they're just making it harder and harder for backdoor heroes, but I don't want to say it's game over yet, they definitely have a chance to come back to it, because it's only 7k, so it's not huge amounts where it's uh, just game ending, so they can definitely sub chances, they got to make sure they have safe engages, and uh, hopefully even pick out people one by one. Yeah, they're really going to have to pick their engages carefully and commit to those engages because now Rumble with that Rylai is going to make sure nobody is uh, going to be able to run Diana with her Zhonya's and her Moonfall, making sure to lock up the members of the Backdoor Heroes as, for as long as possible. And all of this is going to be revolving around Twitch with that Spray and Prey, dealing tons of damage and making sure to lock everyone up and just cause massive amounts of damage everywhere. So if there's going to be any hope for the Backdoor Heroes, it's going to be to pick their fights carefully and commit to those fights. If they want to disengage, it's going to pretty much lead to a team fight loss because they're not going to be able to disengage in time. Yeah, but the Nomad Gaming is picking up another dragon here. They've got every dragon in this game, so it's definitely showing just the global lead that they're having. Um, and looks like Rumble, I mean not Rumble, Bother is picking up that Frozen Island now, so he's going to be a little tankier and be able to hopefully get you out more and more, but it looks like Twitch might be caught out here. Uh, Chase going down, but he is invisible. He's just trying to do what he can to try to kite him around. Ooh, but Twitch with the jukes. May able to juke away from Udyr and escape to safety Udyr. Picking one path, but unfortunately Twitch taking another one, able to escape with his life. I do want to note real quick, Janna does not have a sight stone, so the blue team is relying purely on bot sight wards to maintain control of their vision. And right now, uh, Nomad Gaming Company doing a very good job of offensive warding, uh, making sure to have a ward in that south jungle, as well as within the base of Backdoor Heroes. A brief now they have a lot of vision right now. There's nowhere that Backdoor Heroes can go without having them, without uh, Nomad Gaming knowing exactly where they are. So uh, they, I feel like they should get an Oracles and maybe even some pinks just to clear out some vision so they can push out someone safely. Ooh, but you got a lot of vision. Trying to get caught by three members of Nomad Gaming here. Looks like he's not going to come around. He's going to be, he's being brought down very low, but it does eventually fall. Yeah, Lola Bear trying to defend that top tower solo, but Nomad Gaming doing a very good job of moving as a group and catching out members of Backdoor Heroes alone. Janna currently trying to defend this tower solo. They're not even going to worry about here until Jarvin comes in with the knockup. Udyr trying to fight as much support as he can. Zoning Jarvin away. Janna simply caught, trying to flash back, buy as much time, let that turret pound away at uh, Punzer Tank as much as possible. She's still a lot, actually, Diana able to pick the kill right now. And Udyr caught up, trying to use the shield control stance. 
as much as possible. Flash going out. Final Spark picking up two kills on Blitzcrank and Rumble. Good shot from a Night Stalker. Able to clean up a good portion of the red team. But here comes Secret NFC. He's currently stealthing in. I don't believe he's looking He's looking for an opening. Oh, he's able go. to catch Vanopi on Batman. Diana Moonfall does come off. Moonfall and holding oh, the mirror. so low. Oh, oh. Nice shield up from Lux. Might be Is enough. shield's so gonna low. hold. Oh, oh, five HP is what five he had. Five hell! Holy Jesus crap! Yeah, so that is one Udyr pranked for the gods that he uh, just got with his new skin. Wow, very good job <laughs> for Luxor is doing that save. Yeah, forcing him away was key, though. I do believe that tower was finally picked up. So Udyr, praying to the spirits, was able to get away. Poor guy. <laughs> Cannot believe he got away from that, but this is definitely starting to strangle in for Backdoor Heroes. Nomad G Gaming Company is currently taking their time and slowly closing their hand in on the victory that they really want. Uh, Secret IC currently taking the uh, bot lane tower. Batman is there to force him away alongside Janna, but he does have to be a little bit careful, but Twitch has a multitude of escapes as an AD carry. Uh, he does have that stealth so he can juke away as we have seen before. So he, he is fairly safe in solo pushing that bot, but he does need to make sure that his team doesn't gain into any unnecessary fights without him. It looks like uh, Purple Team is uh, clearing out the, even the what wars that they do have of uh, Backdoor Heroes now. So their vision is pretty much getting dwindled to nothing. Uh, the only war on the map is the, on this Baron and the one by the blue buff, but that Baron one is down. So the only war they have on the map is this one protecting their blue buff. So they're pretty much shooting in the dark right now. Yeah, Secret, Secret IC just back to base. He did just pick up his Phantom Dancer, so even more critical strikes off of that Spraying Prey are going to be coming off. Inhibitor 4 Backdoor Heroes just respond, so they're going to have a little bit easier of a time trying to deal with the minion wave pushes. Minion uh, wave health has been normalized, so they won't be automatically pushing in, but they still have a long road ahead if they want to try to win this game. Ooh, team fight starting, actually. Ooh, nice job with Cataclysm catching three members. But then there, he actually gets thrown out of his own Cataclysm. Uh, they pick up that grab on but it wasn't enough to pick him up, but Twitch bring up the scar on Janna. They're going to be chasing the Switch. Oh, he's brought so low. He's trying to do what he can, but double kill there for Twitch. Very nice job. And uh, Lux trying to do what she can to at least get some poke in there. And yeah, Blitz with the Oracles and this uh, Pink Ward now is definitely going to have no uh, vision. But now, once they take this, uh, they're going to be even in the dark, even in their base currently. So, definitely not the best situation for them. Looks like they are doing pings onto this bottom turn now. So, I would uh, foresee them trying to pick this up here shortly. Yeah, with the, uh, so many members of the blue team down, this is going to be an easy inner turret that they're going to be able to take. Uh, members of Backdoor Heroes are just now respawning, but unfortunately they're not going to show up in time to save this inner turret. That goes down. Nothing but Nexus turret, or uh, nothing but uh, base turrets remaining for Backdoor Heroes, with the exception of the mid lane. That inhibitor is down, and now those minions are going to start pushing in once again. Yeah, they're pretty much forced to defend this mid lane now. Without this inhibitor, it actually makes a huge impact because those waves will always be coming in the base and they'll always have to have at least someone assigned to doing that because if they push out and stay out for too long, the minions will actually win the game for Nomad Gaming. So they always got to be cautious of that until that uh, inhibitor can respawn. Yeah, looking at items as well. Blitzcrank actually picking up an Aegis of the Legion, making sure to get as much aura items as possible. And comparing support items, Janna is currently just sitting on cooldown boots, a Cages, a Philo Stone, and a Mana Manipulator alongside a Ruby Crystal. Still does not have a Sight Stone to her name, so even this late in the game, that Sight Stone can be extremely important in warding the outer base walls, making sure no surprise Blitzcrank grabs come in for, the, uh, for a surprise initiation for a fight. Meanwhile, the wards for uh, Nomad Gaming Company are still within the base, so they still have a really good lock on on what backdoor heroes are currently doing. Yeah, they have a lot of vision. Definitely in the top part of the jungle. They don't have so much near dragon, but they're gonna pick that up right now anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know. I don't. Maybe they, they. I foresee that they're either gonna try to push it to end it here, or they're gonna just push and try to get dragon. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna try to push melee in here, just try to force a fight and try to end this here. I believe. Yeah, Blitzcrank aren't looking to cycle down right now. They're going to try to push that bottom lane tower, try to get that inhibitor, if I'm not mistaken. 
Udyr picking up a lock into the Iron Solari, so he's going to have a little bit more tank to his name as well as a team-wide shield he can provide. But honestly, I don't think it's going to be enough because Blitz is going to have that displacement. Diana, with a huge amount of burst damage to her name with that Abyssal and that Zhonyas, also has a giant spell to add a bit of extra tank. Twitch actually getting caught. Good final okay. spark to bring him down to half health, but keep in mind, he doesn't have to do much uh, on the front lines. He can sit in back with that spray and pray and just start bursting down members of Backdoor Heroes. Yeah, I mean, it's not a huge, I mean, it's definitely not ideal to have your ADC at half health, but when it's a hero like Twitch, all we're all thinking he needs to do is just stay back and then just, you know, close his eyes, no scope, and just spray and pray on everything that he can. Uh, that's pretty much all you need to do, so it's not, I mean, it's definitely not ideal, but it's definitely not a huge deficit, but he just went back, killed some big golems, and got the life steal. Yeah, currently does have that Bilgewater Cutlass, so a good amount of lifesteal to his name. Not quite that of a Bloodthirster, but looks like he's going to go for that Blade of the Rune King, get some percent health damage on top of the ridiculous critical strikes. Blitzcrank caught by a Light Binding. Panzer Tank able to get out of that, though. Not too much damage done to his name. Main goal of him is going to be pulling in, and actually he gets the pull on Polar Bear. Looks like the fight's about to begin. Yeah, here comes the Equalizer coming in from Rumble Zone. A bunch of damage. Spray Spray comes out from Twitch. Uh, does pick up that kill on a Bolivar. Looks like they're still going on here. Diana picking up this kill on Deluxe. Diana's still going to Gung So here, trying to pick up that kill on the uh, Graves, but it just wasn't enough. But now she's popping her Zonia, trying to get out. Now realizes that she was probably extended just a little too far without the square for teammates. But uh, yeah, not too much. Oh, there's so much damage though going on here. The fight is fighting is still going on. Udir doing a great job with his uh, uh, damage. Actually picking up a double kill there, pick up Diana and Blitz. So definitely not the ideal situation. For Nomad Gaming, it looks like they're continuing the chase on to Jar Jarvan. Looks like Graves actually popping his flash, still on the chase here, trying to make sure that they can secure this kill. A uh, Rumble actually does just back, so it's pretty much uh, J4 by himself trying to get away from this Rumble and Graves combo. Good down solo, and then, uh, yeah, that dash in and the buckshot from Graves finishes them off. I'd like to note that during that entire fight, uh, Nomad Gaming Company was not able to take the inhibitor or the turret. The turret was brought extremely low, however, the turret was not taken during the course of that entire fight, and that turret was actually almost MVP for uh, Backdoor Heroes, because it was able to lock on and get a lot of shots on Diana while Udyr was chasing, it was able to get a lot of shots on Jarvan as he was retreating. So that turret was pinnacle in Backdoor Heroes' counterattack, because uh, oh, Nomad Gaming Company was not awesome. able to neutralize it. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, Diana is picking up a Rylight Scepter now, so she's going to be pretty much tanky, a little tank here. Uh, Twitch but having that Blade of the Rune King, so he'll be able to have an easier time bringing down t uh, Volibear and Graves even, even Vol uh, Udyr. So you will be able to take out the three tankier members of Backdoor Heroes. Uh, and the Rabbit on Deathcap coming in from Lux also, so we have a lot of big items coming in, so definitely anything can happen when this next big team fight emerges. That definitely Jan was in their favor for uh, Backdoor Heroes. Yeah, it looks like Janet was also able to pick up the Sidestone. Unfortunately, she also picks up a free trip back to the spawn as Diana was able to pick up an easy kill there. Unfortunately, getting a little bit caught out while trying to ward around Baron. And look at the amount of pink wards for Nomad Gaming Company. They are really making sure this Baron outlet is covered. They currently pick up Baron. Udyr a little bit caught out. Moonfall goes out. The grab does miss, but uh, Moonfall is enough to pull Udyr back in. Five versus one, not good uh, odds for Udyr, and he goes down. Now Lux caught out of position, knocked up by Jarvan. Equalizer goes down. There is no way she's escaping out of that. And this is that proverbial hand that the Nomad Gaming Company is closing over Backdoor Hairs' throat. They're going for that top tower. Yeah, they're going to... Looks like they're possibly going for that top tower. Looks like Rumble and... Oh, actually, no, they're going to switch mid lane here. Mm. Go for this inhibitor, and might even try to go for the next tower to try to win it right here, since they have a lot of HP. Have that Baron buff, so definitely now is their time to... Uh, try to win this, I feel. Yeah, with the zoning potential of Blitzcrank, even the Nexus Towers are not going to be enough to dissuade Nomad Gaming Company from pushing in because they have that power in the displacement via rocket grips. And even without that, you have potent initiation through the Equalizer as well as Jarvan's Demasi and Naka. So this is going to be an interesting pressure. Looks like they're going to try to cycle up, take that top turret, uh, take down all three inhibitors, make sure the backdoor heroes gets flooded by super minions. Yeah, they are going to actually decide to get all three uh, outer uh, inhibitor turrets now. Uh, the middle turret was already down, but at least they got two inhibitors now. And so the only thing they have to do is just put pressure onto this top turret and then just let the minions try to win the game for them. Oh, nice buckshot for the from Graves. Almost finishing off Bollybear. 
Oh, actually, a lot of damage coming. Kind of coming down, catching Graves out. Graves doing his dash to get over that wall. Diana, wow. Yeah, that's three members down. A backdoor heroes. Looks like uh, Nomad Gaming gonna try to secure this here. We should be able to get this inhibitor. No issues now. It's just Graves and let's up. Yeah, and that was the team fight that uh, Nomad Gaming Company really wanted because they were able to combine the Jarvan Cataclysm with Secret Spray and Prey. So three members of uh, the blue team were taken down almost instantly because they were locked up in that Cataclysm, which Secret IC able to play extremely aggressively, does not even care about these tower shots because of how powerful he is with his damage right now. Equalizer coming down, catching out JP. He is down. Secret IC is legendary right now. Yeah, he's doing a bunch of damage. Blitz is great. Picking up his elixir now when he gets respawned. But I don't even feel like he was able to get out here. Good game. It is being caught by both of the members. They're probably realizing the inevitable. Uh, but yeah, it looks like Beckler is did to do a great job this game, though. Even though they did uh, not win this one, they definitely did a, a great job with Kiss Energy because they were starting to come back there for a bit. But uh, just the lead that no bad gaming had just was uh, the end of them. Yeah, Secret IC able to do a whole bunch of damage, Get picking up a triple kill there right at the end, just before the Nexus goes down. He was able to do just enough damage to prevent that uh, comeback from the blue team, so well played to Nomad Gaming Company. Alright, so we will have the next game coming on shortly for you guys. Uh, if y'all enjoyed the stream, definitely feel free to um, hit that follow button if you would like to help us make it bigger and better. You can always hit that donate button below also, and definitely tell your friends about this.